Previously on the keynote, Nikki Wilson was awarded the mic after an intense round of competition at Toastmasters. However, the celebration only lasted moments as Del Toro gave the contestants their next challenge on the minibus. The next morning, the contestants took a pause from competition mode to collaborate and make a difference by presenting a tag team motivational presentation to a local inner city career high school. Bernie struggled to deliver with confidence, while Mel clearly connected with the entire room. Ira's jacket-tossing rant surprisingly won over the audience, while Vicky's transparent story of being a teen mom touched the hearts of everyone in the room. Afterwards, the contestants headed back to the mansion for Del Toro's signature, Men vs. Women Race for the Content Challenge. Dennis bounced ping pong balls, and Jenny O displayed strong leadership while both teams worked hard to deliver a strong presentation. And oh yeah, Nikki Wilson was invited to the cellar by Del Toro. So get ready, right here, right now. It's time for the keynote. Welcome to the keynote. I'm Del Toro McNeil II, peak performance expert, best-selling author, and renowned keynote speaker. You're getting ready to journey into the lives of nine people. Welcome all to the, the keynote. Country. I'm Del Toro McNeil II, peak performance expert, best-selling author, so and renowned keynote speaker. You're getting ready to journey into the lives of nine people from all across the country coaches. who are coming to spend the week with me in this multi-million dollar mansion so I can speaking teach them is still the how number to one fear in America, Canada, and, and other parts of the world. You're about to journey into the lives of nine brave souls from Public extremely diverse still backgrounds the number one who all aspire in America, to become professional and speakers and parts of the world. in the lucrative industry You're about of to personal journey into and the lives of nine brave souls from extremely diverse backgrounds who all aspire really to leave become my job. professional it's time for me speakers to and take authors that next step. in the lucrative that this industry is, of this personal and professional for. development. I really want to leave my day job. It's time for me to take that next step. I believe that this is this is the moment that I've been waiting for. Contestants have come from all across America to have the once in a lifetime opportunity to be mentored by one of the best in the business today. They'll spend five days and nights in this multi million dollar mansion, being treated like royalty and enjoying the opulent lifestyle of top professional speakers, all while being trained, coached, and mentored by Delatoro McNeil himself. They all have one goal in mind to become the keynote. Each contestant hopes to prove to Del Toro that they have what it takes to earn a coveted keynote speaking opportunity at Del Toro's annual Leaderpreneurship Conference, the Full Throttle Experience. Over the course of five days, these contestants will be learning insider secrets as Del Toro shares his coveted 12-step blueprint for building a million-dollar speaking empire. Not only is he great, but he pours his greatness into other people. It was a good learning process, you know, being with your peers, although it is a competition. While being coached and mentored by Del Toro and his esteemed professional colleagues, these contestants will be pushed to the limits as they are tasked with impromptu challenges, exercises, and experiences that will get them one step closer to being Del Toro's personal protege for one year. Who will crack under the pressure? Who will win the hearts of their audiences? Who will overcome their fears? Who will become the keynote? Good evening. Good <laughs> How was the race for the content challenge? How was it? <laughs> Very challenging, awesome, interesting, dynamic. Huh? New content. New content. This was tough. I've got to be very, very honest with you. Both groups did extremely well. You both really deserve to give yourselves a round of applause because you really, you both did a fantastic job. You literally had 20 minutes to build a team keynote. And let me ask you this question, which is the most important question. Did you learn to have a sensitivity towards your fellow speaking peers 
and take and take your mind off of it's all about me as the keynoter. Did that did that happen throughout the exercise? That was the biggest goal. That was the biggest goal for us to take the focus and attention off of how my presentation goes and making sure that the overall conference or the overall presentation is a win-win. Now, as I'd like to share with you who the winner of this task is, I'd like to kind of give both teams individual feedback. Ladies, I really, really admired and respected how you all were so diligent in your choice of illustrations. I like the fact that you came up with multiple props to use and really had very clear and concise explanations for each one of those props. So I thought that you did a great job of utilizing the entire mansion and pulling resources from everywhere to create your presentation. So in terms of overall creativity, I'd like to give a point to the ladies. Now, fellas, <laughs> I thought that you all did a fantastic job of really presenting a united front. I think you did a very good job of, of passing the baton, if you would, from speaker to speaker to speaker. It was very clean, it was very smooth, it was very fluid. And I could easily tell that you all put some time and energy into making sure that the transition between your points was very smooth and was very clean. So in terms of overall presentation delivery, I'm gonna give that point to the men. There is one final point that I would like to give. So we're tied, one and one, okay? <laughs> and this final point I'd like to give in terms of brand integration and product incorporation. Although it was not assigned, one group did a great job of incorporating their brand into the five minute presentation and incorporating product into their presentation. And since those are two things that you all have learned while you're here at the mansion, I would have to hands down give the final point for brand integration and product integration to the ladies making the ladies the winning team. <laughs> So, ladies, as your reward, you all get to, um, after dinner, you all get the wonderful opportunity to uh, enjoy the mansion while the fellas get to do the dishes. <laughs> I know they would favor the women. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. I, I I think the women just dominated the whole process, you know. We we won, of course. I mean, we are not sore losers, but we expected to win. I felt like we all meshed together, which is why we won, and why we made the boys do the dishes, because that's how it rolls. And it was a slip up on our part not to draw in the content that we had labored for the past 30 days, we didn't bring that into the picture. That was a major slip up on our part. Evidently we did okay, even though it was kind of a crazy concept, but we really worked well together as a group. I think we worked very well, you know, as a team. And we lost sight of the bigger picture of product promotion, helping people have the opportunity to learn more about how we can help them. <laughs> Good job, good job, everybody. Good job, good job, good job. Congratulations, congratulations. Y'all got it. Congratulations. Cheater. Boom, boom. I guess you say, what can make me feel this way? My girl, my girl. My girl. My girl. Tonight is Chateau Briard with wild rice pilaf, garlic with the green beans, and we also have a mocha mousse for you for dessert after you finish your meal. Wow. Right. And I know you will enjoy it, so enjoy your meal. Thank you. Thank you.
an awesome dinner yeah. to compliment an awesome day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That says it right there. Literally, literally. For our role in losing the men's versus women's challenge and having to wash dishes, it was, <laughs> if I could say honestly, it was a little injustice because this was the first time there was a loser that had to do something. We've had winners of mics, we've had other competitions, but we've never had a loser that had was punished. So this was a little bit unfair, but we enjoyed it. Again, it gave us more chance to work as a team. Yeah, I had to do those darn dishes. <laughs> yeah, I had my apron on and washing the dishes. Yeah, and that challenge uh, with the women against the men. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, it was interesting. My friend, this industry is fun and extremely rewarding. <laughs> you know, every time I travel and I get on planes and, and, and someone tells me what they do, as soon as I tell them what I do, nobody says, you know, it must suck to be you. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. Every time I tell someone that I'm a professional speaker and best-selling author, they always say, wow, that's gotta be one of the most amazing and fun careers to have. They say, you do that for a living? You do that full time? And I say, yes, absolutely. And I gotta be honest with you. The professional speaking and publishing industry is one of the most enjoyable industries I believe that there is out there because every day you get a chance to get up and change and transform the lives of people that you've never met. You get to create bonds with people from all around the world and you get to touch people and you get to have fun doing it because when you get to be the keynote, the hour is yours, you can do what you want. You can dance, you can sing, you can speak, you can coach, you can sit on the side and dangle your feet as long as you're amazing, as long as you're incredible. So I gotta tell you, traveling across the world is rewarding. Seeing the lives changed right in front of my face, the light bulbs go off for people that I've touched with my message, with my story, with content, is rewarding. So understand that you're entering a wonderful, wonderful industry where it's fun and rewarding. And whatever it is that you do, whatever your passion is, make sure that you keep close the elements of your passion that are both fun and rewarding, because life is short. People say you can be here today and gone tomorrow. That's not true. You can be here today and gone today. So the time to have fun, the time to enjoy what you do is right now. having a conversation with a client, I need you to understand something. These people could have literally just 30 seconds ago hit pause on one of your YouTube videos. They could be literally, the instant that they're calling you, looking directly at your website as they're calling you. So they're expecting to talk to this personality that they're looking at. And they're expecting all that energy and everything, even if you're tired, even if you ain't got no voice, even if, even if you got a headache, even if your feet hurt, don't. They're expecting this brand to be what? So if you can't, so, so hey, you, you don't reach uh, Carrie Enterprises, what's going on? I got the cure for your cancer, I'm, it's morning, seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Bob, Billy, and Joe, y'all ready to make a decision about this keynote? That's, that's it. <laughs> yeah, we just did, right. <laughs> right, right? Yeah, yeah. They're like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? It's, yeah, yeah, fill in the blank, right, right. They're, but seriously, it's true. Yeah, I'ma holla at you. This ain't the time, right? But seriously, don't return a client phone call unless you're ready to be auditioned. Because right. that's literally what it is. Write that down. Don't, don't return a client phone call unless you're ready to be auditioned. Because as soon as you get on that phone, you could be on a speakerphone with all kinds of people. You don't, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've called one person and then they say, oh, we got so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so in the office right now. Yeah. I'm like, okay and I'm in my pajamas. Come on somebody, right? I'm like, oh, okay, I gotta close this deal now and I got my PJs on, okay, let's, let's work it out. You know, I stand up, I get in game mode and they don't know the wiser. Does that make sense? Yeah. Instead of sending someone to your website or to your YouTube page, it's got 20, 30, 50 videos on it, send them a specific video link. So say, hey, it was so awesome. And sometimes I'm doing this while I'm on the phone with them. So if I'm on the phone with the client, I will pull up an email and I'll start drafting the email while I'm talking to them and, and, and copy and paste the link. Right. And as soon as we get off the phone, boom. Or sometimes while I'm in mid-conversation, okay, I just sent you the email. Can you refresh and see if you got it? 
Oh, hold on. Yay, Del Toro, it's right here. Good. That's the video that I want you to play when the committee has their meeting later on today. Does that make sense? I can throw this, man. If you just, I'm telling you, I'm giving you the key to the kingdom right now. If you will just care about your client, care about them. And so like if they say, okay, hey, I've got a big committee meeting. This just happened with the Tampa, the Tampa, Bay, the Tampa Airport Authority. They called me and said, hey, we want you to come do something for us in April. She's like, I got a big meeting with the board uh, tomorrow at seven o'clock. I, I emailed her that day at four o'clock. And I said, hey, I know you got your big meeting today. I'm excited for you, it's gonna go great. Here's the video I'd like you to play for the board. Turn the speakers up, you know, I think they'll love it. I think it'll make their meeting go over well. well. Can't wait to talk to you the next day, see how it went. Oh my gosh, email me back. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I'm excited about the meeting. You, you, you gave me a great reminder, you gave me great, care about them. The next day, it's a done deal, you're picked, you're chosen, send me the contract. Three days later, I had a deposit check in the mail. You see what I'm saying? If you just show them that you care. Now this is, remember how I said the stage is the easy part? This is the stuff that you gotta do to get to the stage. One of the most important skills that a speaker has to develop is their ability to convey their idea to the news media. So I've brought in my dear friend who's a celebrity uh, television host to train these speakers and to see in this activity if they've got what it takes. Do you really know your own book content? Do you really know your own keynote content? Do you really know your own uh, course or signature program content enough to where when an interviewer or a reporter asks you, you can come back powerfully with a powerful response. This is a cool activity to see if they've really got what it takes to consider themselves experts in this industry. Let's see how well they do. So you need your website. Yep, know that. And your website needs to be having a lot of videos on that website, right, to tell your story in, con in conjunction with your written content. Now, the key thing is I built hundreds of videos in my YouTube channel over time, right? You might say, darn, I don't have any right now. It's okay. It's all right, right? What H. John taught us today, it wasn't new to me, but it took it down to another level. His experience is incredible. The authenticity that he brings to the stage and to the platform because of his vast wealth of experience. Who can't learn something new from that type of instruction? Let's talk about your video profile. Your video profile should be a professional video. I'll talk about the selfies to Cameron. Cameron, that's cool. But your video profile should be a video that uses professional voiceover, some footage, some B-roll, get, get a few um, uh, conversations or interviews with you. And what happens is you need to make that look good. If it's going to be a half-ass garbage, don't put it up. The things that H. John helped us with in conveying a message and how to do that effectively through the different medias of video and social medias and those type of things really resonated with me. Most content that's uploaded today in YouTube in one month is more than the three major networks produced content in the 60 years prior. Wow. So the content that's going online right now is more than the major networks over 60 years of production produced. Mm. Is that crazy? Yes, it is. If you ain't got your own reality show, something's wrong, man. I'll tell you, I get a call every day. <laughs> H, let me ask you a question. I know, you want a, you want a show. I got you. <laughs> Come on, we all have our show. Everybody has a what? Story, there you go. To be able to use YouTube as a um, resource right now is kind of scary to me. I use it to learn things or to watch artists that I like, musicians that I like, different things. But for me to be on it, actually I am on YouTube right now, but you wouldn't know it. It's me meeting my brother in Ireland. So that was pretty cool. So, but I saw myself on the film and I'm like, that's so strange to see yourself on film. But I would like to use it once I get more comfortable. So you can take YouTube and you can plug that on your website. You can plug it on your blog. You can plug it on your social media, your Facebook, your Twitter, Twitter. And you could use, use your YouTube to be able to accommodate all those and tell your message and your story. And what's the best part about it? It ain't costing you millions and millions of dollars for a big production, right? Everybody can have their brand, their message, and video's the way. We don't want to read 10 pages on your website about you, right? right, right, right. 
he empowered us with the knowledge and the information so as we move out and venture to uh, grow our business, how we could utilize these new tools, Facebook, YouTube, and you know all these d different things in order to take our business to the next level and how to be in sync with today's time. So I thoroughly, I thoroughly enjoyed his presentation and um, the material that he left for us. I feel like I have enough to, I I'm confident, although I've never did this before, I'm confident with the material that I got for him that I can go back and apply it and be a success with it. We all have our own styles. It's important to take your unique selling proposition. It's got to be tight. You got to pull it super tight. A lot of times you got to find a niche. Del Toro was so brilliant when he said, find out what's going on in the media and attach that to what you're doing because it's a hot button. Because from a news perspective, I want to be congruent, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm going to give you a shot on my TV show, I'm the guy, I'm the conduit to give you a platform to out there to thousands of people with your message. Right. That's crazy. Right. I like having that power. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've had an absolute blast working with these participants. They're great. They're all talented. But now we're going to turn the intensity up. We're going to put each of them one-on-one -on -one in front of the camera, in front of the lights with me for a one-on-one -on -one interview. And guess what? At the end of it all, I have to determine who is going to be the winner of this challenge and ultimately on their way to getting the keynote prize. Mel, it's so great to have you here. Tell me the name of your business and what do you specialize in? Actually, H. John, I'm a pastor in San Antonio, Texas at the Joshua House of Worship. I have an online radio station, Joshua Generation Radio, and I've written my first book. That's why I'm here. Being in front of a camera today with H. John was not easy, but I was comfortable. Uh, it was a challenge. And I think everybody felt the tensity of that challenge, some more than others. Bernie, it's so great to spend the afternoon with you here today. Tell me the name of your business and what do you specifically do? Well, my business is uh, I'm trying to help women, especially with self-confidence. I'm an entrepreneur and a confidence coach. And this is a new experience for me as I've struggled with my own confidence. So I figured I'd get out of my comfort zone, help other people with theirs. Well, when I spoke to H. John Mejia, it was a little uncomfortable because he was so close. He kind of got right in my space, and I'm like, I don't, you know, I, I felt a little uncomfortable. But, and also not knowing the questions he was going to ask. So I figured, well, just answer his questions, do the best you can. But yeah, the camera was kind of, and then having to look right into the camera and say something and actually be forceful, that was a little difficult. One last thing, this is a competition. Can you tell our viewing audience who are watching the show right now, why should you be chosen as the keynote and take that beautiful keynote trophy home? Well, I figure I should be chosen as the keynote because I'm the newest person on the staff and I'm stepping way outside of my comfort zone. So I figured maybe I'd get a little kudos for at least going for something that most people are terrified to do. And I'm definitely terrified doing what I'm doing right at this particular moment. So glad to have you here. We're so excited. The viewers are excited watching you. Glad to have you here on a Good Life Tampa Bay TV show. Tell me the name of your business and what do you specialize in? Uh, my business is called um, Business World Concepts, and um, I specialize in helping entrepreneurs uh, grow their business and uh, develop their concepts. I really had a, a great interview with him and really enjoyed his skill and his expertise in conducting the interview. I believe I gave him good answers to all the questions that he had, and it pretty much was an uh, easy flow from the beginning for me. And I guess I'm looking forward to uh, having our other opportunities potentially with H. John to uh, do other interviews. One last thing. If you look right to our viewing audience on camera and tell them why you should be the winner of the keynote. I should be the winner of the keynote because I'm an entrepreneurial guy and I think everybody loves an entrepreneurial story, loves a winner, and loves the opportunity to succeed and prosper. Nikki, it's so great to have you here at Keynote. Tell me a little bit about your business and what do you specialize in and what's the name of your business? Um, the name of my business is Warriors Creating Wealth, and the mission of my business is to help veterans transition into the civilian world. Thank goodness for H. John Mejia for being there for our direct-to-camera exercise and our interview because he really taught us how to bring out our strengths and to make us feel comfortable in front of the camera. So I, I just wish um, I had met him sooner. <laughs> One last question. Look right to the camera for our viewing audience and tell them why you should be chosen as the keynote. 
I should be chosen as the keynote because I want to send a message out to this country that we have a great talent resource pool that we haven't even used, and that is those who have given their 24-7 into serving our country. And as a keynote, I could spread that message throughout the country and really make an impact uh, on our community and our economy. Charles, so great to have you here. We're excited about spending this great week with you. Tell me the name of your business and what do you specialize in? Sir Charles Carey, my business is dealing with people from a perspective of helping them to get not just where they want, but where they need to be. It's not natural, you know, because when you're used to feeding off of energy and you're looking into a camera lens, you know, to uh, convey that you're speaking to someone or whatever the purpose is, you know, you have to just adjust. And I don't think you'll ever really, I mean, people get used to it maybe, but it, the feeling is not natural. So, uh, you know, you just got to focus. Can you give me an example of what you've done to able to inspire and help somebody along those lines? Sure. I've traveled in the government circles, uh, teaching customer service, public speaking, professionalism, things of that nature, and also on the independent basis as well. If you could do me a favor, look right to the camera for our viewing audience. Tell them why you, Sir Charles, should be the winner of the keynote. I should be the winner of the keynote specifically because I love people. I have passion and I have a vested interest in your success and it's in me. I have a responsibility to do all that I have, all that is within me to make you a success. So if you make me a success, I automatically win because I'm in your corner. Sean, it's so great to have you here at Keynote this week. Your energy and excitement has been well received. Tell me the name of your business and what are you guys specifying? Well, I am the Wealth Shift Project. That's a, a business that I have and I get a chance to help people shift their wealth. I'm a wealth strategist and I try to create abundance through debt reduction as well as just wealth accumulation through strategies and, and metho methodologies that they use uh, in their finances. Wow. As I was answering, I just knew that I wasn't giving him everything that he was looking for. I didn't give him what it was needed. And I walked away saying, I could have done so much better. What is one thing that you can, maybe in working with a client, when you get started with them, what is one thing that you really pick out to get started to, to help them in the right direction? Well, the first thing I do before we talk about any type of wealth accumulation and how to become successful, millionaire, whatever their definition of wealth is, we talk about uh, getting up out of the rat race of consumption. So my biggest thing that I work with is how, teaching people how to do what I call ACT. Avoid consumption traps, which allows them to, again, get out of the everyday rat race, get out of the muck and mind of creating debt to turn that into wealth. Jenny, it's so great to see you once again. Tell me the name of your business and what do you specialize in? Yeah, H. John, my business is Lifestyle Change International, and I specialize in helping busy professionals when they're at a fork in the road or don't know what they're going to do. I help them find that clarity in their path. We've done some camera work. In our, in our training leading up to this. So I have looked into my own camera as a selfie holding it in front of me, but not necessarily standing there and making sure that you bring it and you bring it hard and you bring it fast and you bring it straight to their heart. So I just really went out to do my best, but as far as comfort level on a scale of one to 10, a seven, a six, seven. Jenny, give me a scenario where you've helped with a, you helped a client uh, break through mm -hmm. and what did that mean to you when you helped guide them in the right path? Oh, wow. You know, breaking through with a client is, is extremely powerful. You know, I get, I get a lot of women who are just down and have no idea where to go. And I work with them to work on using positive affirmations in their lives in order to propel their dream forward. And so I make them say these affirmations to themselves in the mirror day after day and even to myself on the phone. It's scary for them. Looking direct to camera and knowing how to look direct to camera. Uh, I tell you the truth, it was, it was kind of intimidating, but uh, because he had such a smooth voice, um, I had a sense of peace about doing it, and um, basically we had gotten some instructions niche, uh, uh, prior to, so I just kind of utilized what I was taught and, um, and made it through the process. Vicki, it's so great to spend the afternoon with you. Tell me the name of your business, and what do you specialize in? What, do you, what is your business all about? The name of my, thank you, it's a pleasure being with you as well. The name of my business is The Beauty of Entrepreneurship, and um, it's through um, Insight You Global, LLC. And what we do is we help new entrepreneurs who are entering the beauty and barber industry get off to a great start. And what would be one of the first keys to help and guide them with and getting off to a good start? What would you suggest to somebody in that industry? I would say the very first, the very first thing they need to know is to know their why. 
Why do you want to do this? Why do you even want to be in this industry? Because I believe knowing your why is going to be the fundamental principle that helps guide you and ground you as you um, proceed throughout the process. Thank you. If you were to offer somebody one piece of advice with what you do and getting them off on the right, uh, right starting point, what would that one piece of advice be? The best piece of advice I could tell them would be to decide on a direction that you want to go. Look for what you like to do. Find your passion if you can. And to do that, you really need clarity and vision. And I can help you find that. When you put yourself into the moment and start caring about the people that are on the other side of the camera and thinking about them, you don't see the camera anymore. At least I didn't see the camera. I saw faces outside of the camera. And that helped me tremendously by just picturing people on the other side that wanted to hear the things that I have to say. Last question, look right to the camera for me for our viewing audience and tell them why you should become the keynote because this is a competition. I should become the keynote because I have so much to offer. I'm the old dog with a ton of new tricks. That's DAWG, by the way. I've done everything from plow behind a mule, supervise an engineering division on a nuclear submarine, be the top salesman in a large sales organization, run top sales teams. I've met, you know, ran, grown, successful, multi-million dollar companies, and I've been reinventing myself for years and years and years, and I'm perfect for helping you reinvent yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Listen, you all have gone through extensive media training, live interview training, and now we need to know who the winner is. H. John, how did the contestants do? Well, Della Torre, I was overly impressed. I was totally blown away. Each and every one of you delivered a great performance. Each and every one of you was authentic, you were real, uh, and each, of, each one of you played off of your own personalities. For example, with Bernie and Vicky, you guys were soft-spoken and you made that as an asset. So remember I said in training, you've gotta play off your strengths. Yeah. Jenny, your enthusiasm through the roof. Uh, Sean, you did a nice, nice job in your delivery. Dennis, sincere from your heart. Uh, Nikki, Charles, Mel, all of you guys we're just top professionals. I was really impressed, and it's really a, it's really a tight call here. Uh, you put me under the gun here and trying to make a make a decision here, but you all did a fantastic job, and, and you took you took note of what I said in training very well. So so tough decision, but someone has to win this activity. So H, can you please tell us who shined the brightest in this activity? Who deserves the mic? I mean, what if, if what if I just change it up? Can I give them all the prize? <laughs> I, can't do that here. No. Can't, right. can't do that. All right. Okay. All right. Since I cannot do that, because I would welcome the opportunity, each and every one of you have a hand in this prize, because you guys are all awesome. But based on the fact of being totally polished, poised, in control throughout the entire interview, maintaining eye contact, delivering to camera, based on all those little things coming together, there was clearly a winner. And I have to award this prize to Sean. Great job. Oh. <laughs> Great job, buddy. Congratulations, John. Awesome job. Fantastic. Awesome Absolutely. Job. I thought that I did really well, and he tricked me. I thought I was going to win because he was looking right at me, and I was like, oh, I got this. And then he was like, Whoo. looked the complete other way, and I was like, oh, well, I did my best. <laughs> to win the mic again, and do it in this environment where I was being interviewed by a professional media personality, I was just blown away because, but to get that feedback from him to say, you delivered everything and you did, delivered it in a professional manner, I was blown away. So that gave me again another, just reassurance that I'm heading towards the right path. And that really helped me with my confidence with, with the ability that I can step up in front of any micro and, and answer the question. So as you can see, this competition continues to get more and more intense as we seek to find the keynote with each activity, with each exercise. We are observing, we're watching to see how you learn and apply everything that we're teaching you. We're bringing you the best of the best. H. John's done a phenomenal job, hasn't he? Love you guys. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. Take everything that you've learned and use it and apply it as you begin to start interviewing for books and interviewing for a product and interviewing for speaking engagements and interviewing for media opportunities. 
Use everything that you've learned so that you can promote and package your brand to the world in the best way. Every one of you all are winners. Congratulations. And Sean, congratulations again. Yeah. For Del Toro gives you not only the theory, but the practice of how to put it into practice. If you are not here, you need to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of your evolution, man. Congratulations. And uh, we got a brand new graduate of uh, Professor Stane. The words you choose have power. Say my words have power. Every sentence counts. My life will never be the same. I believe that I can go and crush any stake that I'm put on. How many in this room are tired of average? Off the charts. You gotta see them. That's why I say it's not about you, y'all. It's about them. And you gotta be committed to do whatever it takes. In half a day, I guarantee you, the people in this room learn more about the speaking profession and how to present and deliver a good, solid message that makes impact. And we got two and a half days left. Speak from your heart, people can tell. And I don't believe in just tapping people on the shoulder. I believe in hitting people upside the head with a sledgehammer. That's my style. It matters how what you say lands on the other side. Your audience gives you all kinds of feedback. In my voice and my message, it's, it's a purpose, it's a value. This man knows what he's talking about. He crushed the stage today. I cannot even begin to tell you what a defining experience this has been. I knew when he offered this class that this is where I had to be. If this is something that sounds like you, I implore you to explore it at crushthestagelive.com. If you got a message, you need to be here. Hello, I'm Brian Tracy, and I've just been through a wonderful presentation with Del Toro McNeil, and he has an incredible training program to teach speakers how to be great speakers. I've been in this field and teaching speakers for more than 10 years, and his program is one of the best in the entire country. If you want to be a great speaker, go to his program and go now. You all have worked on a project that now we get ready to open like it's Christmas. So, Colleen, if you will help me, we have some resources back here that we're going to have everybody open together at the same time. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to ask all of you all to, on the count of three, open your Happy New Year, Happy New You product. This should have proven to you that if you could do this in a month, how much time did I give you to do this? Not even a month. But you did it. Come on, somebody. So with the amount of time you had, you did it. You got rid of the excuses. You got rid of the fear. And you made it happen. Let's reveal the keynote product development showcase. The shared joy in that room was incredible. Everybody knew what the other person was feeling and that made it even more sacred because we weren't alone. Listen, you were gonna do a product swap. Here's what a product swap is. Every one of you all is gonna give your peer one of your products, all right? So that now you are gonna leave here with nine products from your family. Isn't that cool? On your mark, is that go. When I first saw my product, Boots in the Boardroom, I was absolutely thrilled because it was quite a journey in, in creating the recording. As a matter of fact, I was slowly losing my voice towards the very end when I was talking about overcoming adversity. So I was really thinking, wow, I really gave it all I got at such a short period of time. I was just actually thrilled to see the finished product, Boots in the Boardroom. It felt good to uh, share the new product because well, it's a new year, and um, you know, when you start a new year, you want to have different things that are in your life or different uh, things incorporated in your business, and to uh, have a new product to start the year off was exciting. Uh, it's the first time I've had my audio program packaged in this manner, so that was new. I mean, I've done CDs and stuff before, but not an audio program as a speaker. 
So that was uh, really exciting. You know, when I first got the assignment for this product, it was scary. Three weeks, and to get this done with everything else I had going on, it was like, okay, I already had a block on working. I was working on a book. I already had a block there, and I didn't really know where to go. I went down by the ocean, which is usually where I get my inspirations from. And I just kind of was thinking, okay, what am I going to do? And I was just trying to clear my mind. And this inspiration came to me about change. Because I had been working so hard and pushing it so hard, and I couldn't get anywhere. But when I cleared my mind, things started to happen. The product reveal was fantastic. I'll put it this way. I had about three scares leading up to the product reveal. Scare number one, Della Toro texted me on Friday before this experience and said, where's your product? And I said, well, wait, 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 wait. They said it was delivered. He said, I don't have it. He texted me on Saturday and said, I still don't have it. I was calling the company. They were closed. It's a Saturday. They're in California. They weren't answering. And I was freaking out. So at 11 a.m., I called them and I said, hey, I need my product. And they said, it's already there. So I had to call Dell and say, where is it? And then he said, oh, it's in the bottom of the box. He found it. So then when it comes today, they tell me, I don't have your product, I don't have your product. It's in the bottom of Nikki's box. So then I open Nikki's box at the bottom and there's my product. So I was ecstatic to finally see it because it was three scares very quick. Oh, it, it was phenomenal. When I got to see my product for the first time, it was like, how did I even do this in three weeks? I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it because we were pushed to do this so quickly. And it was a new experience for me. And when he announced that we had to do this, I'll never forget the conference call. I was like, there's no way I can do this. There's no way I can do this. But I did. And he said, take imperfect action. So I just went for it. I don't want to exaggerate. I've heard my wife talk about giving birth, and this was my baby. Seeing this project for the very first time, it did something for me. Um, it was amazing because I know what went into it, and it was a very special place in my heart. And I just have to say, I was proud of myself. I'm just incredibly surprised about this product because this was truly nothing more than just an ideal in my mind, not even a month ago. But now I've taken the opportunity to put that ideal through the coaching of Dale and really push out a product that is not only going to help people, but it's going to give me the courage that I have what it takes to do more of that. Well, Don, it was really exciting because I had spent um, a lot of time last year trying to determine what, um, what ways I might go about being able to um, make a product, design a product. And I did research on the internet and spoke to a variety of different people, but I didn't quite get the answers. But I do know one thing, you know, Walter Emerson once said that you become what you think about all day long. And I know that what you see is what would be. To see my product, this precious product for the first time, I, I, I'm still trying to embrace it all and, and really believe that I, it was created, you know? But it's awesome, it's, it's a wonderful thing. You know, I had no idea that I could create something like that in the three week process, you know? But I'm, I'm excited, I, I, I'm so happy. You know, I just, it just, every time I look at it, it just let me know that I can do it. I can do this, I can do it, I can achieve, I can do more. So it was a wonderful, wonderful feeling to have that product today. It felt like Christmas morning because we were all just excited, exuberant, and just we couldn't believe that, again, something that was pushed out of us not even a month and a half ago was literally in our hands, and we were all so proud and so happy because we had just birthed a baby. Take imperfect action. My friend, as I keynote all across the world, this is one of the things that audience members run up to me afterwards saying, man, that one statement set me free. Because I believe that we live in a society that pressures us to be perfect. And the truth is, you're never gonna be perfect. Practice doesn't even make you perfect. It makes you better. 
So I believe that we have to be willing to take imperfect action on our goals and dreams and aspirations. So if you want to produce more, if you want to get more done, if you want to achieve your goals at a much more accelerated rate, get rid of perfection and learn to operate in excellence. Excellence doesn't mean you're perfect. It just means that you're striving for high standards. I challenge you, my friend, take imperfect action and watch your productivity explode. Uh, organized because when I got there I was the first person and uh, the, the photographer was really professional and really awesome he had pretty much marked out the areas where he wanted me to stand and the type of poses he wanted, wanted me to, to provide for him to take the best shots. All of the the process of, of doing the photo shoot today it was just awesome. We had uh, fabulous people here to help us, of course. Joe, our photographer, he's just off the chain. He just told you how to stand and how to pose, and you did it, and it made the photos look great. So it was wonderful. It was, it was empowering. see us all collectively together feeling strong and surrounded by a mentor who is helping to take us to the next level. It just was a powerful session. The experience of dressing up together at the photo shoot tonight, everybody in their best, it was kind of like going to the prom. <laughs> yeah, it really was. It was like everybody's got their best, best foot forward and we're having fun. Boy, that photo shoot tonight was incredible. We had so much fun. We had a chance to showcase ourselves as a group. We took some serious pictures, some fun pictures, but overall we realized that this was going to represent us and it's gonna last forever. So we really enjoyed that and we took that seriously because that's going to represent what we're doing. Del Toro gives you not only the theory, but the practice of how to put it into practice. If you are not here, you need to be here. I'm proud of your evolution, man. Congratulations. And uh, we got a brand new graduate of uh, present stage. The words you choose have power. See, my words have power. Every sentence counts. My life will never be the same. I believe that I can go and crush any state that I'm put on. How many in this room are tired of average? Off the charts. You gotta see them. That's why I say it's not about you, y'all. It's about them. And you gotta be committed to do whatever it takes. In half a day, I guarantee you, the people in this room learn more about the speaking profession and how to present and deliver a good, solid message that makes impact. And we got two and a half days left. Speak from your heart, people can tell. And I don't believe in just tapping people on the shoulder. I believe in hitting people upside the head with a sledgehammer. That's my style. It matters how what you say lands on the other side. Your audience gives you all kinds of feedback. In my voice and my message, it's, it's a purpose, it's a value. This man knows what he's talking about. He crushed the stage today. I cannot even begin to tell you what a defining experience this has been. I knew when he offered this class, this is where I had to be. If this is something that sounds like you, I implore you to explore it at crushthestagelive.com. If you've got a message, you need to be here. Hello, I'm Brian Tracy, and I've just been through a wonderful presentation with Del Toro McNeil, and he has an incredible training program to teach speakers how to be great speakers. I've been in this field and teaching speakers for more than 10 years, and his program is one of the best in the entire country. If you want to be a great speaker, 
go to his program and go now. Bernie Volkman, I need to see you in the cellar. Bernie, how are you? Oh, a little tired, a little nervous, but it's exciting. A lot of learning experience, a huge learning experience. A lot of growing just in a short amount of time. Yeah, I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. I need you to understand that I'm very, very proud of you. I think that you have added so much to the team, and I think that you have so much to offer. Mm -hmm. And I think that you are beginning to see that. Which is awesome. You know, the interesting thing is you're on a journey and I'm proud of you for your commitment to talk about the very thing that you struggle with. Yeah, definitely. And I'm proud of you for that because that's a big deal. Most people can't. You have a transparency mm -hmm. and an openness that most people simply literally wish that they had. And you have it. Mm -hmm. And God's blessed you with that. But what's what's what what what, what I'm looking for now at mm -hmm. this new season at this new juncture mm -hmm. is for you to take the gift of emotional intelligence and emotional authenticity uh -huh. and use it to help people. Right. Can I ask you a question? Uh huh. Yes, you can. If you were driving down the interstate and you witnessed a car accident mm -hmm. and you just so happened to be right behind the accident mm -hmm. and you saw there was a little child right. that needed to be saved. Uh -huh. You pulled your car over and you ran and there was something on top of the child. What would you instantaneously do? Well, I would try to lift the object off. At first you'd have to check and make sure that so sometimes if you lift something off it might cause it internal work. bleeding. Right. So. I would call 911 first, okay. and then I would check, and then if like I could get a pulse or something, I'd check that, but sometimes if you try to do too much, sure. you could injure somebody. Cause more damage. Yes. But the ultimate answer, that was the technical answer, okay, technical. But, the, but the truth is, you try to help. Oh, definitely. You try would to try help. to lift the heavy burden. Correct. 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 To get that person out. Correct. What I'm saying to you mm -hmm. is, I believe that you have a responsibility to help pull people out. But in order to pull people out, you gotta get strong. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lot stronger than what I was. I know. You would it. never. And I'm proud of you. You would never recognize me a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe that. But I don't, I didn't know that Bernie. Right, I know. I know this Bernie, and I know the I know. Bernie that I've known for a little while now, and I'm taking this Bernie forward. And what I'm saying to you is that there are audiences that need you. There are business professionals that need you. There are families that need you. There are adopted children that need you. There are parents that need your message and your story. Mm -hmm. But you gotta be okay I know. with the fact that you're not okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am. I'm just trying to get tougher. It's just, you can't just immediately get tough. Nobody said immediately. I know. Nobody said immediately. But I need you to understand that you're stronger than you know. Oh, I know. I'm very strong. I know that. It's just that it, the emotions come out of me so easily. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not trying to change that about you. Okay. But what I'm saying is, when you take on the role of being a speaker, an author, right. a coach, an encourager, especially in the area of confidence. Right. People have to see and be able to bank on and count on that confidence right. to pull them out Correct. of their situation. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this to you. Whatever happened to you in your childhood <laughs> that you did not deserve, <laughs> that you did not deserve, Bernie, I'm sorry for whoever did it, what they did, how they did. But you have to realize that that's not you. I know it's not it's me. It's what you went through, but that's not you. No, it's not me anymore. And oh. God brought you through that for a reason. Yes, he did. But it still hurts. Yes, that's the problem. It's, yeah, it still yeah, hurts. Yeah, yeah. But is, is it because... <laughs> There is some underlying secondary gain or benefit that you get out of being stuck there. Not really. 
I don't think so. I don't feel like I don't want to be that level, way. At no. the conscious level. Yeah. I don't know. Rather than, oh my gosh, I went through that. Right. Let's replace it with, I survived. Yeah. And I'm going to help others survive. Mm-hmm. Right. That'll never ever happen to you ever again. Oh, no. <laughs> and if you raise up your voice, whatever happened won't happen to others. Mm-hmm. Maybe you need to start a nonprofit organization around whatever happened mm-hmm. to give a vehicle so that a voice can be given to that pain so that you can heal from it. Because mm-hmm. you need to heal. You need to heal. I thought I did with all the therapy, but obviously I haven't. (laughs) So one of the best ways to heal, watch this, is to share your story Mm -hmm. with people Mm -hmm. and open yourself up and let people come to you just like they did today at the school Mm -hmm. and pull so much joy Mm -hmm. and strength from you. Mm -hmm. And I saw the light go off in your face (laughs) when you were able to encourage those young ladies. Mm -hmm. And part of that healed your heart. Oh, definitely. Let God continue to do the work he's doing Mm -hmm. to heal your heart. You trust him, I know. Oh, definitely. But I need you to stand strong in who you are Mm -hmm. and when you touch that stage, Super Bernie (laughs) takes over. Does that make sense? Uh The Bernie that's strong, the Bernie that's confident. Right. You got to be willing to lead people where you're willing to go. Pain is pain. We've all got it. Oh, yes. But I shouldn't be wearing it on my sleeve. No. You yeah. got to yeah. let it go because you got too many people to help. And you experienced it so that you could have a sensitivity towards others who have experienced it. Mm-hmm. So I honor your your sincerity and your emotion. Mm-hmm. But I need you to step up. Square your shoulders. <laughs> and say, I've got people to help. Mm-hmm. So it's no longer about me. Right. No, it isn't. It's about them. Mm-hmm. Take the attention off of the past. And put it on the future you're trying to create for others. If you're willing to do that. And look, look at how you've shocked yourself in the last three to six months. Mm-hmm. Look at what you've done. Mm-hmm. Now future pace that another three to six months. I need you to be strong. I need you to be confident. Stand there. Come on. Stand up. Strong. Yeah. Strong. Confident. Confident. Okay, pick a pose. That gives you victory. <laughs> that gives you power. That gives you strength. Mm-hmm. That gives you joy. Mm-hmm. Now make a sound that gives you power. Make some. Make a sound right now that gives you power. <laughs> do it again. Do it again. Woo-hoo. Okay. It makes you laugh, right? Yes, it does. From now on, <laughs> listen, when you feel that those hurtful emotions rising up, I want you to stand in that posture. Mm-hmm. And what are you going to say? <laughs> people do think it. I'm crazy. What are you going to do? Woo-hoo. Does it matter what other people think? No, that's my problem, too. I exactly. realize I always worry about what other people think. It doesn't really matter because they're going to think what they want to think anyway. So Regardless it, it of your matter. permission. It doesn't Absolutely. matter. Absolutely. So what do we do? We stand strong and go woohoo. <laughs> do it. I'm ready to hear it. Or woohoo, but I wouldn't want to do it out loud when I'm in public. <laughs> okay, so what's your inner woohoo? Make a make a movement. Make a movement with your body. Woohoo! Do it. <laughs> that wasn't very forceful, was it? <laughs> woohoo! <laughs> Take it seriously. No, I know. Give yourself a physiological anchor mm-hmm. that puts you in a more productive and positive mental and emotional state. Use the flip switch technique. If this room was pitch black dark, you wouldn't take a shovel to scoop out darkness. Mm -hmm. All you would do is come in and flick on the light. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Turn on confidence. Turn on belief in yourself. And turn on the woohoo. Turn on the woohoo. Promise? Okay. All right. I will. You got this. All right, thanks so much. Thank you. It's the key to your next level, Bernie. Okay. I promise. All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you very much. On the next episode of The Keynote, 
The contestants are once again put into the pressure cooker as they're taken into the backstage operations of a major book publishing house here in Tampa, Florida. Each one of them will have to deliver their best two minute pitch to the publishing executives as well as myself. We're gonna see who can package, promote, and market their message about their book to us in the most compelling way for ultimately getting the grand prize of a $3,000 book inventory grand prize. In addition, we take the contestants back to the mansion and take them through a really intense team building challenge, which is really gonna push their limits, let personalities come out, let tensions emerge, but ultimately it's gonna unite them as they prepare for their final weekend seminar. I'm looking to see who's gonna rise to the occasion, who's gonna push the limits, who's going to be my personal protege for one year, and ultimately, who's going to become the keynote.